I'm Nick Palmashano. And I'm Matt Finney. And this is the Bad News Network, Quarantine Edition. <music> Coronavirus is definitely having an impact, both on the health of the nation and economically. Here's our breakdown. On the medical side, due in part to really poor planning on the part of our nation, in part to the fact that our supply chain is mostly in China for critical equipment, and in part to the fact that China literally bought all of the raw materials it could for the N95 mask, we have a little bit of a personal protection equipment problem here. Doctors and nurses are struggling to get the proper equipment in New York City and Washington, and it's putting them in a really bad position. Elsewhere, we're not yet seeing those kinds of pushes, but there's already concern pretty much everywhere that they're only holding at any given point two to three weeks of supply, and the supply chain is really dried up. I'm hoping like hell that we learn something from this. We 100% need to manufacture things that have a national security component, like PPE, in the United States. There's no reason not to do it. And if we're not going to for whatever reason, then we need to have a national or state level reserve, or even a mandated hospital level reserve for all of this stuff, so that if there's another pandemic and the same situation arises, we have an easy solution. Second bit of bad news, on the economic side, while most businesses are continuing to do well despite the fact that the stock market has tanked a bit, mom and pop shops and restaurants are getting killed. Congress is talking about a stimulus plan right now, and they're talking about bailing out the huge, too big to fail businesses, and they're talking about sending everybody a $1,000 check or a $2,000 check or whatever. And like, I'm not even gonna get into that right now. If you're gonna do a stimulus, a critical component has to be looking out for small business. Small and medium-sized businesses do not have a lobby to look out for their interests, and small and medium-sized businesses do not have the ability to garner votes like the individuals have. Because of that, politicians tend to basically overlook them every single time. I'm very concerned that Congress is going to rush to give these large companies that already have billions of dollars in cash reserves more money or rush to give individual people a grand or something, which probably in the big scheme of things isn't going to change this equation. And they're going to overlook the fact that we have a huge component of our country that literally is going to disappear if this thing doesn't clear up very fast. Restaurants are not designed to go a month without business two months without business. They cannot survive like that. So if we don't plan for this, if the government doesn't plan on doing something, or if private citizens don't come up with some way to deal with this, those businesses simply will not exist. And the last bit of bad news regarding the spread of this virus, it's moving, right? New York City is in bad, bad shape. Washington is in bad shape. The virus is literally in every state now, and in most places, it is still following the same trajectory as Italy, which is a bad trajectory. But now let's come out with some good news, because there's a lot of good things happening right now that we're not really seeing a ton of in the news, and maybe we should be. On the medical side, doctors have now identified a host of drugs that seem to be helping with the coronavirus. These drugs are not built for the virus, they're already approved for other things. But that means they already have FDA approval in terms of safety. Now we just need to get the government to sign off on various purposes. One drug, an anti-malaria drug from the 50s known as hydroxychloroquine, has actually showed to basically eliminate the virus over the course of six days, especially when combined with zithromycin, or as most people know it, the z -Pak. This could be the breakthrough that we needed to get ahead of this disease. And yeah, there's some crappy companies out there. For example, one small pharmaceutical company doubled the price of this drug and then claimed later that it was an accident, had nothing to do with this whole crisis. They were just trying to increase the price in order to build some ability to manufacture down the road. But for every one of those, there's somebody trying to do the right thing. Bayer Corporation, for example, donated 3 million pills to the effort. Many doctors are now taking this drug as a prophylactic. This is crazy good news, and I hope that many future studies bear out that this is actually a cure while we continue to work on the vaccine. Nice job, medical profession. You guys rock. 
And finally, on the good news front, I can't tell you if we're doing everything we need to be doing in order to stem off everything that's occurring in Italy right now, but I can tell you that I'm seeing more and more people take this seriously and make good decisions. In North Carolina, for example, downtown is essentially a ghost town. People are not really going into restaurants. People are very cognizant to wash their hands. They're keeping distance from each other. They're not blowing this off the way maybe some of the news reports you've seen from Tennessee or from Florida are showing people reacting. So hopefully there's more of what's happening here around the country and less of the idiot spring breakers just trying to have a good time, not worrying about the world. To bring something back from a couple years ago, YOLO, not the way to treat this disease. Just a reminder, if you really think you need to be out and about living your best life, don't be an asshole. Nobody likes you anyway. You don't need to be out. The Democratic debate between Bernie and Biden was unnecessary. Bernie lost. It's over. He's out. He doesn't have to drop out. He can do whatever it is that he wants to do. But it's over. Biden versus Trump. Even Gavin dropped out now. Biden has stated that he'll nominate a woman as a VP. If it's Michelle Obama, he'll win. If it isn't, I don't know who's gonna move the needle for him. Kamala Harris isolates the middle. Klobuchar has the chops. She's probably the smart choice, but I don't know if she has enough for the swing states. Elizabeth Warren doesn't help him with the moderates and never really mobilized the Democrats anyways. If he did pick Gabbard, the Democrats would probably turn on him. But who knows? Biden could pull something unexpected. He could have a Sarah Palin moment. We'll see. As the new normal sets in, interesting questions about how society functions are emerging. Schools around the country are closed. Will they resume? No one knows. So what happens next? When school finally resumes, is it going to be as if nothing ever happened? Will kids have to go back and take years that they have missed? We really don't know at this point. It is unprecedented for the United States school system to just basically stop. Yet here we are, a dead stop. If the federal government doesn't make a decision about a path forward, then each state is going to have to make its own individual decision, which might be the right way anyway. During these crazy times, we've seen people do some really stupid stuff. From hoarding 17,700 bottles of hand sanitizer and price gouging people on the internet about them, to fighting over toilet paper, or going to Red Robin and just bragging how good it is to sit amongst a horde of people. But nothing quite compares to the stupidity of TikToker Ava Louise, who wanted to show how brave she is by licking an airline toilet seat. First of all, let's assume that COVID-19 is not a thing. The airplane toilet seat is probably one of the most disgusting things on earth. No man can actually pee into the toilet without splashing on the seat. And then you have the asses. Asses who just crushed two burritos with extra queso from Chipotle. Fat asses from people who don't bathe regularly. Diseased asses with psoriasis or eczema, or maybe some good old fashioned IBS, which inevitably leads to hover squatting. We know that women and men occasionally try to hover squat on planes, which leads to misses. That's right, there's actual nugs of shit on these seats. Now I've met a lot of New Englanders, but Ava Luis, you have hands down the dirtiest mouth in the world. Senators Richard Burr, Kelly Loeffler, Dianne Feinstein, and James Inouaf are under fire right now for potentially executing some insider trading. All four were part of security meetings that outlined the potential impact of the coronavirus. Most of them did extremely well financially as a result of their decisions. They all claimed innocence, however, either stating that one, they all used only public information to make their decisions and not the private information they were privy to because of their positions, or two, their spouses were the ones that actually executed the trades and they knew nothing about it. I know that this is the way it works in my personal life. I can just make hundreds of thousands of dollars of decisions without even chatting with my wife because she just doesn't care. She's just like, hey, you know, you're the man. You can just make those calls. False! I have to talk to my wife about any major purchase, just like most people have to talk to their spouses about any major purchase because that's the way things are. The idea that somebody is going to cash out 500 to $1.7 million of stocks without even having that conversation is odd. However, innocent until proven guilty. Besides, these people are rich and they're powerful 
and no matter how evil the actions were, they're not gonna get in trouble anyway, and we all know it. After a couple of run-ins with protesters on his campaign trail, Joe Biden will now receive Secret Service protection. While presidents and vice presidents automatically receive Secret Service protection, candidates have to put in a formal request for this. And this started back when Robert Kennedy was assassinated. Once a person puts in a request, the Secret Service does a threat assessment to see if it's warranted. Honestly, I'm not even sure Biden needs any more security. Did you see his wife Jill on Super Tuesday? When a feisty protester jumped on stage to attack Biden, his wife got out in front of him like Jason Bourne. She had some moves, man. Jill Biden, at 68 years old, who not only fought off a ravenous protester, also forced a man away from her husband who was trying to interrupt him while walking behind him. When he pressed forward, Jill overrunded the man, threw him over her head for five points. Just kidding. She pushed him towards security who made the man leave. I like my version better. On the other side of the coin, the other Democratic candidate, kinda, Bernie Sanders has not requested security. Maybe that's because the biggest issue that Sanders has faced with protesters is when a group of women showed up topless to crash his rally. If anything, that's probably the ticket that's gonna galvanize the younger voters. These women clearly have a top-down approach when it comes to government, whereas Bernie Sanders, as a democratic socialist, clearly wants to take care of the bottom first. This week, two more Hollywood actors have come down with the corona. Action stars Idris Elba and Christopher Hibsu both went to Twitter to announce to their fans that they've got the virus. You know Elba as him doll in the Marvel Universe and from basically everything else because he's in every movie and he's great in all of them. He says he's doing fine and uh, he doesn't really have any symptoms at all and actually went out of his way to say, because I don't have symptoms, it's more important that you look at the fact that he has this because anybody could have it, could be spreading it around and other people could be getting hit harder. Christopher Hivju, who's known as Torment Giants Bane in Game of Thrones, or if you don't know the names, the red-headed angry guy from the North, has gone into isolation with his family. He also only has mild symptoms and also wants everybody to be careful and go into isolation so that this doesn't spread further. If the White Walkers couldn't stop this man, we don't think the virus will either. We recommend a large IV bag of Giant's Milk, and old Tormund's gonna be just fine. In total government overreach news, Lindsey Graham and Dick Blumenthal have launched an all-out assault on privacy. The new Earn It bill will require all messages sent over the internet to be scanned by a government-approved scanning software. As if that wasn't bad enough, the companies handling the messages wouldn't be allowed to encrypt them. Why is that? Because if they did, they would lose all legal protections that allow them to operate. Any website that doesn't follow a list of best practices will have their 230 protections stripped. What's a 230 protection? It provides immunity from liability for publishers that provide information published by others. Basically, without this, Facebook, Twitter, basically everybody gets sued into bankruptcy. This en masse scanning would basically open up all messages sent to everybody and create a back door which you hope only the good guys would use. Privacy and security will die just so the government can feel like it's helping. Andrew Gillum, a man that almost became Florida's governor in 2018, was found blitzed out of his gourd. Police were called into the room after paramedics were treating another guy with an apparent heart attack. Gillum was laying on the floor, incoherent, surrounded by bags of meth. He was lying next to another dude. No one was arrested and everyone was free to go, despite the fact they were doing snow angels in meth. If anything, I'm sure we're gonna see Gillum again soon. In fact, maybe he should have been Florida's governor. The US Health and Services Department has suffered a cyber attack on its computer systems. This has been called a campaign of disruption and disinformation aimed at undermining the response to the coronavirus. While a foreign state is suspected, the U.S. has not yet identified who is responsible. Just before Sunday, the National Security Council tweeted about a fake text that might be going out. The hack doesn't seem to have had any penetration and resulted in no data being mined, but, you know, props to you for trying, hacker. The past couple of weeks have obviously led the world into an utter frenzy. Monkeys are killing each other and flooding into towns in Taiwan. And now, people are calling the police over a lack of toilet paper. I'm sorry, what? That is almost as bad as calling the police because you can't turn your TV on. Yes, we have suffered some mild inconveniences as a result of everything that's going on right now, 
But did you lose any semblance of common sense? The officers who are out working right now have much more important things to do than ensure that your butt is clean. Have you ever heard of running water? Socks? Small dogs? Marmots? There are options, people. I want to say again that there is no shortage of toilet paper except for the shortage we create ourselves. If everybody just kept buying toilet paper at the regular rate, there would be plenty of toilet paper for everyone. But for some reason, we're hoarding it. I promise, if we get to a true apocalyptic scenario, you will not care about toilet paper. It will not be a thing that registers in your mind. You will be worried about guns, food, water, and shelter, and that's it. That's it. I'm sorry. It's been a long week. And finally, in Florida Man news, it just doesn't pay to be a good Samaritan anymore. The unnamed victim, who we'll just call John, met Colin Guybe at a party in Melbourne over spring break. Guybe was drunk, didn't have a way to get home, and was so incoherent he couldn't give John his address. So John did the best thing he could. He brought Guy back to his place to sleep it off in his spare bedroom. The next morning, however, John found Guy peeing everywhere all over the room. John asked Guy to leave multiple times, but instead Guy turned violent and decided to attack him. He came at me with his dick out, John said. Guy punched the man multiple times and then attempted to choke John. Eventually, John was able to throw Guy out of his house and call the police. Police said they found blood at the front door, holes in the walls, and a bathroom utterly soaked in urine. When police asked Guy about the incident, he said, you've already heard the whole story, I have nothing to add, and then added, why am I here? Indeed, Florida man, why are you here? And where did you come from? Ah, that's right, Florida. And with that, I'm Nick Palmashano. And I'm Matt Finney. And this is the Bad News Network. Our news is at least as bad as the news you're getting already. And folks, if you know any small businesses out there that could use a little bit of a shout out, a little more attention, maybe somebody to go to their website, throw it in the comments here and we'll try to push some of those businesses out over the next few weeks. Hang in there. Don't let the corona get you down. Illegitimate non-corona.